Hostack.js. Validation. Right. Guys, uh, really happy to be here. Uh, I would like to thank Dylan for the invitation. And uh, just to warm up, <coughs> sorry for my voice, uh, I would like to speak a little bit about Node.js as a service, like how we run it on production. I'm going to present really, really basic stuff, so if you guys already know it, I'm not going to show anything new. But since we are a very, very diverse community, people coming from design or from, I don't know, strictly front-end, uh, and now that we have the opportunity to run JavaScript on the server, may be new for some people. So it's nice to at least raise up the level of everybody and then we get these basics done. Oh yeah. First of all, <laughs> why, shall, why, why I'm saying all this? Yeah, Because usually, when we want to run something in production, I already seen people doing things like this. You SSH to the server and you run the node command. But then if you close your terminal, <laughs> you can be smarter than that. So, okay. You can go to a screen session. And then, okay, screen session. And then you run your app. Then you can safely close your terminal. But still, if the process crashes, okay, you detach from screen, you're good to go. But still, it's not something, like, it's not the right way of doing that. You could even be more smart ass and do a screen session and then do something like this. <laughs> <laughs> so if the process crashes, it restarts again. <laughs> no. So uh, the community created like a lot of options for that. How how to monitor the node processes? How to to have it in a production-like environment? And uh, I'm not going to enter on, on the discussions about system D versus upstart. I'm just going to present upstart, not because it's my preferred way, but it's because it's the simplest. And like you don't have to learn additional tools, it's already there on your operating system. And you can just get like very minimum to have a production ready environment. For that I created a very complex node application that looks like that. I did test driven of course. <laughs> and basically <laughs> it just prints hello full stack and listen on port 1337. The only thing I need to make this as a service is to create a uh, etc init my app conf with those lines here. So basically you just describe the, the service and the, the script that you want to run, I'm piping this to, to a log file. And also, after starting successfully, I just log there on the same file that, okay, the app was started. With that, we can already have something like sudo start my app on the server, and then we have it running on this port. If we stop, of course, it stops. So we already have like a demonized way of controlling our app up and down. Uh, it automatically starts on machine boot, because if, if you try that smart while loop there, if the machine crashes, you would need to do it again. Having this as a service, it automatically uh, it starts as even if the machine restarts. And when you want to deploy new code, you can <coughs> simply sudo restart my app, and then it will update the new code. This is already an improvement of running on the terminal, but now I would like to, uh, to stress more why we should have uh, something else in front of Node and not use the built-in uh, Node web server. Basically, a guy does a request to our Node app, and it replies. When a lot of guys come and do requests, we have here only one single thread that will treat all, every, every request and re reply to all of them. Uh, we can put something like varnish in front of it. And why we would like to do that is that uh, varnish would be the, the front and then the, um, the user just requesting to varnish. Varnish does its, its job and just pass the request back to node, gets the response. 
and before sending back to the client, it saves it in memory and then returns it to the client. When the next guys come, they will do requests to Varnish. Varnish will just check, do I already have this request in memory? Yes. And then reply back without even stressing our uh, node server. So this is super fast because everything is in memory there. We already have cached uh, response and we just serve that so we don't stress our application. Uh, to get something wor like that working, uh, you just need to install Varnish and point the backend of Varnish to your application, <coughs> this, you know, this port uh, 1337. Uh, Varnish by default it uh, listens on port 6081, something like that. So if we, instead of talking to our node app directly, if we talk to Varnish, Varnish will, uh, on the first request went back there, requested to node, got the response, saved in memory, and, um, and replied back to the client. The advantage of this, apart from speed, is that even if we stop the service or, or it crashes for some reason, it still serves it because it was already memory. So that's really nice. It saved already our asses there <laughs> because we have like some nodes um, going down and Varnish just holds at least what can be cacheable, like home page, stuff like that. Um, but not all content is cacheable. There are some things related to sessions that are very unique to the, to the user. So we can put something else as well. Everything I'm proposing here is like not a recipe, it's just one way of doing the things. You can have only Varnish, and even on Varnish you have some configuration to let it pass depending on the request. So you, you could do everything only on Varnish or only on Nginx. But I'm trying to uh, give an overview of the possible options that we have and, and different tools that can help us. So here, putting Nginx on front of it. We can have this ability of bypassing Varnish if you want. In case of, if we have a um, request with a specific URL that we want never to be cached, or we always want the fresh content. We can tell Nginx, okay, this kind of URL always go directly to the source, never uh, request varnish. Static assets. We don't need as every request to go through node. If we want to serve images, JavaScript, fonts, we don't need to compete with all other requests in that single thread environment. We can just let Nginx deliver these static assets um, for us without even um, going through to Node.js. We can even serve different versions of the same application or another Node application. Everything under the same API, the same public uh, address. What we win with that is that when more people come, and do requests to Nginx, Nginx will create several worker processes. <coughs> and um, <coughs> each worker process will do whatever it wants to do. So if this guy requested something that is cacheable, the, the first one here, okay, <laughs> I, I go to Varnish and deliver the content. If the second guy just asked for static assets, okay, go as well. No, uh, we don't need to wait. We get uh, concurrency with that. So to get concurrency and an Nginx, we just need to edit um, one single file there on the, on the Nginx configuration and say, okay, I have two different upstreams, my varnish, my node, and I also have some rules here for static assets. This is very basic, of course, we're not going to use only this in production. Um, and, but with that, you can already have this kind of setup that I presented. And since I'm listening here on port 80, then I can try to access on port 80 and it will get the content. In this case, it will get the content uh, from Varnish. So I have that cached, it's not something 
dynamic that I, I cannot cache, but I could create a rule like that. Any slash non-cacheable content or that matches a regular expression, I pass directly to nodes. So yeah, so basically that's what I have what I have here to share. It's simple. <laughs> And um, all the, the contents that I put here on the slides, I, I used something very similar and I ran for months in production with something like that. No tricky configurations, nothing. It's, uh, it's good, good enough for starting. So, uh, if you guys have any questions or if it was too boring, just let me know. <laughs> So I'm just curious, you wearing a Docker shirt, and um, I got a question. Um, so how is actually your experience with Docker and this setup? I mean, having different services, different ports, and a local system or production. Yeah, I would put uh, nginx in one container, varnish in another one, Node.js in another one. You would still put all of them in different containers. Yeah, yeah. I would put one process per container. <laughs> And how is it uh, like physically? Is it separate machines or do you, do you run it in, in a virtual machine? Or how does it yeah, it can be anyway. Uh, you can have all in one server. Um, it's important to know that Varnish consumes a lot of memory because it keeps caching all this stuff. So we wouldn't put together with another application that also consumes a lot of memory. Uh, but you can balance, you can have depending on your resources, you put something that is memory hungry with a processing hungry in one machine and then you put, I don't know, Redis with something else in another machine. But yeah, or you can it have all in one. It wouldn't make sense to put everything in one machine. <laughs> hmm? It wouldn't make sense to put everything in it one It makes sense as well. Depending on the size of the app. Yeah, yeah well, then everything is down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it? Okay guys, thank you very much.